Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. We have 27 to the power x plus 9 to the power x equals 4 over 27. And we're going to be solving for x values. And I'll probably be presenting more than one method. Let's get started and see what happens. So in this equation, something is definitely calling, right? And that is substitution. And you know that I like substitution, hopefully. It's just amazing. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the bases first. We have a 27 and a 9, which means that they have a common base of 3, because they're both powers of 3, right? So let's go ahead and write the 27 as 3 to the 3rd and 9 as 3 to the 2nd. This just implies that we have 3 to the power 3x plus 3 to the power 2x equals 4 over 27. I know at this point some people are guessing and finding some solutions. Let's hold on to those, okay? Now, we can go ahead and express this as follows. Uh, since the exponents are multiplied, this means 3 to the power x cubed, and this means 3 to the power x squared equals 4 over 27. This is what I meant by substitution. We should definitely call 3 to the power x something. How about t? You like t? 3 to the x equals t. Let's replace uh, 3 to the x with that. We get t cubed plus t squared equals 4 over 27. This might look like a difficult problem because, first of all, it's cubic. And cubic formula is somewhat complicated. Actually, it's not that complicated. We've done quite a few of those. And the second is we have a fraction on the right-hand side. So let's get rid of the fraction. And 27 is nice because it's 3 to the third power. So we'll take advantage of that. Let's multiply both sides by 27, like this, and like that. 27 cancels out. We're going to distribute 27t cubed plus 27t squared equals 4. Awesome. As if this made it easy, right? It actually did, but we're going to use our awesome method again, one more time, which is substitution, right? So let's go ahead and write 27t cubed as 3t to the power 3. And this one can also be written as 3t to the second, but we're missing a 3, so we'll put a little 3 there. It makes sense? So 3 times 9 is going to give us 27, which is what we have. And that equals 4. 4 is a constant, just stays like that. Now, we can go ahead and call this something, right? And I don't know. Let's just call it u, all right? u cubed plus 3u squared equals 4. What does this equation tell you? Tell me what this equation is telling you. If, it, if you say u equals 1, you're right, because 1 plus 3 is equal to 4. So you see, that's one of the things that I always want, would like you to check. If you get a polynomial equation, always check for the sum of the coefficients. In this case, it's 1 plus 3 minus 4, which happens to be 0. That always means that u equals 1 is a solution that's actually one of the trivial solutions that you will sometimes find. And then there is the negative one with the odds and evens and so on and so forth. But in this case, u equals 1 works nicely. Great. u equals 1 means what? It means 3t is equal to 1 because u is equal to 3t. And this just means that t is equal to 1 third. Great. By using substitution, we were able to find t, but t is not the original. It's not in the original problem, right? We have to back substitute one more time. What is t? t is 3 to the power x. Let's go ahead and replace t with 3 to the power x. And that's going to give us 3 to the power x equals 1 over 3. At this point, is 1 over 3 a power of 3? Yes, but a negative power because it's a fraction. So how do you write 1 over 3? You can write it as 3 to the power negative 1. And from here, x equals negative 1 will follow. Make sense? So x equals negative 1 is a solution, but is that the only solution? At the beginning, I did not specify whether I'd be looking for real, complex, or all. We can go ahead and explore all solutions in this case, right? So x equals negative 1 is definitely going to satisfy, is it? We can go ahead and check it out, actually. So we have 27 to the x plus 9 to the x equals 4 over 27. If you replace x with negative 1, you're going to get 27 to the power negative 1 plus 9 to the power negative 1, which is 1 over 27 plus 1 over 9. And that gives you 1 over 27 plus 3 over 27, which is 4 over 27. 
It's actually a really nice way to look at things, obviously. Sometimes we can find solutions by guess and check. And for example, if you try to break down this fraction right here, like 4 over 27, how could I break it down into two pieces, right? Well, I could probably write 3 over 27 plus 1 over 27 because a good reason for that is 3 divides 27, and of course, 1 always divides 27, right? All the time. And in this case, we're kind of finding that 1 over 9 and 1 over 27. And from here, we can directly associate this with this and this with that which means that x equals negative 1 is definitely a solution. But the million dollar question is, is that the only solution, including complex numbers? Are there any complex solutions? We kind of need to go back to our polynomial in this case and consider the following. We can use either one of these, like either the t or the u. Uh, let's just work with u because its coefficients are much nicer and factoring it would be easier. So let's go ahead and pick it up from here, u cubed plus 3u squared equals 4. That was our equation, right? Let's make sure we got the right one. Yes. And actually, minus 4 is probably uh, should be on the left-hand side. Here we go. So that's our polynomial, and we do know that u equals 1 is a solution. So knowing that is actually really good in terms of factoring, because now we can use it to manipulate our expression. Here's how we can do it. u cubed is followed by 3u squared, but I want it to be followed by minus u squared because in this case, I can factor the u squared out and I get u minus 1, which means u minus 1 is 0 if u is equal to 1. Does that make sense? So the factor theorem tells us that if u equals 1 is a solution, then u minus 1 is a factor. If it's one of the factors, I'll try to make that happen. Make sense? Okay, so that's the whole idea behind this thing, and I'm going to continue. So I took out minus u squared, but I do have 3u squared, which means I need to balance it out with an addition of plus 4u squared. Now, so far we're good because negative u squared plus 4u squared is equal to 3u squared. Makes sense? And then, of course, this will be followed by minus 4 because that's it. We don't have anything else. This is equal to 0. I mean, you can continue with u's, but you don't need that really at this point. Factor by grouping u squared times u minus 1 plus 4 times u squared minus 1, which is factored as u plus 1 times u minus 1. And then this gives you u minus 1 times u squared plus, you're going to distribute to 4 here, 4u plus, this is for you if it's your birthday, happy birthday to you. But this problem is for you guys because we used u as a variable, right? So what do you get from here? You do actually get... By the way, I think uh, we made a mistake because this does give me uh, other real solutions, which I probably ignore. Well, never mind. They're good. Okay. I just, <laughs> okay, uh, confused myself for a second. And from here, we get this. The second equation, we already know that, right? So let's go ahead and focus on the second one. And the second one is actually really nice because that's a perfect square and just just perfect. From here, we get u equals negative 2. But what is u? u is, I think, 3x, right? u is actually 3t, no? u is equal to 3t, so 3t is equal to negative 2, and t is equal to negative 2 thirds. But remember, t was uh, 3 to the power x, so we're going to replace t with 3 to the x, and this is going to give us some complex solutions, and I'm going to leave that up to you guys to find out, okay? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.